you? I'm good. I'm good. Not as tired as I was yesterday, um, but as excited. How was the screening of Tesla? Sorry? How was the screening of Tesla? That was a full house, 65 cars. Um, and it was amazing, you know? It's like on, seeing something on the big screen. This is not something that you see anymore. So we kind of missed it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Nikola Tesla would have enjoyed that. Yeah. I hope that we'll, you know, in the future, and maybe this, this is the right time to tell us if there's any distribution plans on, like, you know, a theatrical release. In yeah. The uh, August 28th is the date. And if theaters will be open, then we will be in theaters. Uh, okay. IFC uh, okay. is exciting. Yeah. It is, uh, and but honestly, I'm excited to screen the film before that. And uh, thank you so much for letting us screen this film. Um, it was really like a huge turnout, and that that was great. You know, just to see the whole park full of cars, and they all like you know looking at the, the same way upwards to the to the screen that was great um so let's talk about the film a little bit like it's it's honestly like it's a very different take from what whoever uh was interested in in you know the common well-known story of tesla and edison and all that so maybe just describe shortly like you know what is the what is the you know the synopsis uh you know in a nutshell what is happening in this film well, it's not about the car, and <laughs> it's about Nikola Tesla and his remarkable life. Uh, less about his invention, more about the era uh, with uh, J.P. Morgan and uh, Westinghouse and Edison. And Michael injected in the movie the doctor, the daughter of uh, J.P. Morgan and Morgan. Uh, and she also narrates the movie, so it gives us a difference between the future and, and, and the past uh, in a very original way. So. Okay, so you mentioned Michael, Michael Almereda, the, um, uh, the director, who you have a, like, a long time relationship with, but I know that the story behind the film and behind the script of uh, Tesla is very unique in a way, very um, unregular. Can you tell us this tale? Sure. So Michael Almereda is, he's also the writer of, of Tesla. Um, it's my third movie with him. Uh, we did Experimenter, uh, and then uh, we did Marjorie Prime. And after Marjorie Prime, I asked Michael if he has other scripts, instead of creating one from scratch like Marjorie Prime, if he has something in his drawer. And he said, actually, I do. I have uh, my first script uh, about Nikola Tesla. And I said, can you send it to me? And he said, sure. And he sent it to me physically because he couldn't have, it was on a typewriter and I never uploaded it uh, online. So um, I read it and it was great. And I said, uh, Michael, let's do it. And after 37 years, uh, <laughs> we have it. So it, it took, it was a, from the script that he had, we had to, first of all, we got uh, Ethan Hawke, attached and Michael and Ethan worked before in the in the past and Ethan was excited and I met Ethan in the Gotham Awards and he said let's do Tesla let's do Tesla and I said okay and then uh, there's a lot of um, as in every movie uh, there is a lot of funny stories but it started at Sundance with an executive producer called Lee Broda that asked me, what are you working on? And it was cold and we were in a small uh, cafe and I said, Tesla, I said, yeah, send it to me. And I did. And then Krista and Lati called and said that Milena was interested. And uh, Eisen Robbins jumped in and uh, I can throw more and more names because there's more and more people involved, but everybody did a lot to make this movie happen. And the thing is that from 37, Years in the drawer of Michael and Moreta, we came out with this unique uh, story that I think is very important uh, for people to know who he was. Okay, great. So you mentioned Millennium. Now we know Millennium Films as like a, a big production company, like well-known name in Hollywood. But usually we know them before for action films, like a big budget action film, like The Expendables and and 
Olympus has, Olympus has fallen and Rambo and all that. And this is like a real indie film, an art house film by definition, very complex with different layers, sometimes hard to comprehend. How did it work? You know, this merge between this kind of film and Millennium. Uh, actually, it worked very well. In, in hindsight, I had some fears because of the difference, but they are they were perfect from inception. They attended to every of Michael Almereda's uh, request when possible. They um, they came up with the day that they had to, and Ethan later on delayed it because he had another movie to make. They were they were cool about it. They were really amazing professional. Um, I think they want, they're looking for great material and they want to expand, not only uh, these mega blockbuster uh, theatrical movies, but also some quality uh, work. And, and that's why they joined on this uh, project. And I, I must tell you, um, they are, they were on board, on set, uh, on the ground, from inception till the end of post. Uh, and and still now, I mean, they, they were really uh, amazing. We have a movie, uh, a music uh, by Tears for Fears, and uh, <laughs> it was not in the budget, and they made it happen. Uh, so there were some concessions by Michael and by them, but in the end, uh, I think they created. The, they, they were they were perfect. Uh, really, they were great. You think it's a trend in Hollywood right now that big budget, you know, or, or like big uh, production companies are more interested in little, like smaller uh, indie production? <clears throat> well, you say little and smaller. It is much bigger in content and education wise. And, uh, and uh, that said, I don't think it's a trend. I think it's very hard for an independent movie to find a home. It has to be the right time and the right interest for them to fit one or two movies like this in their wheelhouse. Um, so I don't think it's it's a trend. Um, I think people are looking for great content and Nikola Tesla carries a name uh, and a following. So I think they were very excited to, to, to get on board. Okay, great. So we, we saw like some films in the past like that were dealing with the same era and the same, you know, competition and rivalry between Nikola Tesla and uh, and uh, Thomas Edison and, and, you know, Westinghouse and all that. We saw the current world lately. Uh, we saw the prestige before by Christopher Nolan. What is the uniqueness of Tesla for someone who didn't see the film uh, in comparison to those films? So you said that you didn't completely understand uh, Michael Amareda because Michael Amareda makes films that you have to see a few times in order to understand. I still watch Marjorie Prime and I'm trying to understand after 100 screenings. But the, the uniqueness, jokes aside, the uniqueness is Michael Amareda. He's an artist and the movie is a work of art. It's, there's not a lot of information about Nikola Tesla's private life. And he tried not to deviate from the facts and not to focus on the rivalry between Edison, but more on the person, his, his demeanor, and how he saw him uh, living life. So I think that's a unique take, um, and it's 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 a work of art that some people would love and some would not. Okay, uh, talking about Ethan Hawke, who is really dominant in this film, um, and as you said, he's like he was a real important element of putting this whole thing together. Talk about a little bit, and I know that you'd started a relationship with him and you're gonna work on another project. Tell me a little bit about that, about him. So Ethan Hawke is a gentleman, an artist, a, an amazing person. He is a delight to work with. He's very talented. Uh, as you said, we're doing a Tennessee William uh, adaptation that he wrote uh, that we're working on to, as soon as production opens, we will go into production. But he had his own um, vision of how Tesla should be uh, portrayed. Michael has his own, and Michael is very, um, very strict on the way Michael sees it. So uh, there was, it 
mostly I can say that Ethan was an actor in this movie. Um, and and Mike was a director. And not a complete uh, synergy in the, in the creative point of view. Um, Ethan did make a, a 20 minute. Um, I don't know, documentary, or, or you can call it whatever you want to call it, but he was filming himself in character outside of the set, at his home, back at the set with his dog, with his wife, with, with the actors. It was amazing. It was brilliant, and that's more humor, and that's a different take on Nikola Tesla. So that's what I try to bring. Okay, great. Uh, as a producer, especially in Hollywood, you know, you know much more than, I guess, the, the indie um you know community in new york but how important is to actually attach a star to get um to get a project going you mentioned it that you had to have uh, ethan attach in order to you know start rolling how important is it like how does it go there in hollywood so i think it is the most important i mean a filmmaker is important very important and if you are very successful as scorsese uh, i mean there, there is a certain level but if you're an independent film producer and you have an A-list actor, it works. Uh, I had a, I optioned a book called The King of Oil, and um, I showed it to two CEOs of two big studios, and they said, "Well, you know, it's not a bestseller, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Then I brought them the script. They said, well, you know, and then Matt Damon was attached, and then they, of course, wanted it, but we signed with Universal, so it's that important. Uh, and that's even before having a director. So when you have an A-list actor, whether it's Ethan Hawke for a certain one, it's Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, um, Leo, anyone, that, that is something that, uh, that drives uh, studios and streamers to be interested. Sometimes they say they care about the script, but they care less about the script and about the more about the names. It, it's really a market. Yeah, you, you can. You, I can just like mention that you worked those two films that you worked with uh, with Michael. So like Experimenter, you had names like Peter Sarsgaard and Winona Ryder and Jim Gaffigan, who we can see here as well in Tesla, and Anton Yelchin and Marjorie Prime. You have like John Hamm and Gina Davis and Tim Robbins. So even though those two films are kind of more indie style, they're more like complex and. Um, you still have like big stars there. So I guess that was a big contribution for, for the production. Yes, and, and that's what Brian, Ma, what Michael brings. I mean, uh, all these actors that you mentioned worked for very little uh, just to make the film because they wanted to be in a Michael Alberta movie. So he's a real artist. And when you have that kind of a, a, a talent as a filmmaker, uh, stars want to work with him. Okay, great. Like two more questions. Uh, first of all, like this is a, like a, a periodic drama. Uh, you know, it takes place in another in another time, a different, tall, different era. Um, it seems that we we're, we're seeing less and less, and it's maybe because it's like it also costs more and more these days to make like a real historic drama. How did you, from the production point of view, how did you did you make like create a different time, a different place on, on like on the screen with like an affordable budget. So again, I have to compliment Michael Almeida again. He, he is so innovative in coming up with, with uh, backdrop and, and, and the way he shoots. Um, uh, it, it's, it's really unique what he does. It's, it's really, uh, it doesn't always work for everyone in other movies but Michael gets away with it. And the way uh, we shot the experimenter and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Tesla, we had some budgetary uh, constraints that uh, we couldn't fly to other places, like we couldn't go to Colorado for Tesla. Um, and and uh, timing with the actors, et cetera, et cetera. So, we have to come up with some innovative uh, ways. I think it works if the story works. It doesn't work if you want to become a major movie or to show that you're a big movie when you're an independent movie. So you can't, you can't steal, but you can definitely uh, show that. 
Okay, so before we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, tail flick, um, I there's we we have a question from the audience, uh, mm -hmm. and we have like a lots of lot of filmmakers. That's our audience. Um, so they're asking, you know, following up on your answer about like the the talents, like the A-listers. How do you draw an A-list actor? If there, if you have any advice, how do you draw an, an A-list actor into your indie production? Well, what is the trick? If you're not Michael Almereda. <laughs> okay, so so I'm doing some other project again, one with uh, with Matt Damon, and so you. It's it's hard. You have to be innovative and in how. So there is a, one book that uh, that I'm doing, and I needed a good director. And I, I flew to Brazil to meet uh, Jose Pachilla, and he did Narcos. And so I knew where he was in a certain day, and I was there. And you know, and then it's up to you to 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 make it happen. So um, and if he's interested in the project, so you have to have a good project. Then you have to meet the person. Then you have to convince them that your project is better, and they, they because they get so many good projects. A-listers get uh, everything from all the big studios, from all their friends, the independent producers. You have to be unique. You have to find something that is good. Michael Almereda is one thing. Uh, other is um, Don Dolillo, for example. You know, I have a, a book of his that we're doing a TV series. Uh, it is, it's, um, it's finding the source material, the, the, the original content, and then trying through whatever means you can, uh, getting to, to the right actor. Okay, so now I know that you're, you have like your own uh, different endeavor, uh, which is Tail Flick. Um, tell us about that. Well, this is a very unique project. So, so uh, the, the fact that I said the story about the King of Oil, the book, is when I optioned the book and I brought it to these, they, the story was amazing. It's a story about Mark Rich. That's why, why Matt Damon was so interested. And, uh, but the two heads of the studios didn't want it because it was not a bestseller. So I said, hold on, they just, the studios are just using bestsellers. Something is wrong. What about all the thousands of thousands of hundreds of thousands of great stories that are there? So I joined with uh, George Berry. He worked seven years in Apple and then he worked at Netflix and retired until he met me, and we opened Tailflick, which is a platform, a kind of a, a curation a library for original content where producers and, uh, and studios can come in and search and find good stories, and we option some and, and, and move them and create them. And we found some gems. We saw, found some bestsellers, but we found some books that, because they are on Tailflick, became bestsellers and, uh, and became in some major publishers went on and, and, and got to these books. So it's a very uh, unique platform. It allows all authors from around the world to, to have a bigger exposure to this very small circle of, of producers and, and studios. How, so how do you how do we get to you? Like how, how do you pitch it to Tail Flick? So you go to, to tailflick.com and you upload your book. And if you're a producer or a, or a director or an actor. We have a lot of A-list actors that are coming in and looking for original content. And you, you put the genre that you want and you, you find the, the book and you can read it and uh, or you can ask us and we send it to you in a specific group. And then you can option it or negotiate on the shopping agreement with the authors. And uh, they get the, the, the authors get great exposure. And the studios and the streamers, they get it a curation that for them is so hard to do. We read everything because we have this funnel and and um, and for them, it's, we chew it up for them. It's very easy for them. Okay. Ori, we are out of time, but thank you so much. It was really knowledgeable just you know to, to talk to you and hear your insight about the film, but also about the whole industry. And like we have so many young filmmakers that you still in New York. Um, so, Thank you for all the advice and, you know, uh, um, guidance in a way um, and doing it for free. So <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you and uh, good luck in your festival. We love it and we're so happy and honored to be on a big screen outdoors during Corona uh, <laughs> on your festival with Tesla. So thank you so much. Okay, next year you'll be here with us okay. and party and show film.
<laughs> All right. Okay, thanks, Uri. Thank you. Thanks, Uri. Bye. -bye.